Tokyo Live and Tokyo Live and Tokyo Live Welcome again to Tokyo Live 2021 Endoscopy 1. Of course, we thank uh, Professor Inoue for uh, this uh, global uh, event that take the attention everywhere in the board, uh, including here in uh, Europe. And I have uh, a very special uh, co-chair today, one of the main uh, pillar uh, of the European Endoscope and European uh, Society, my best friend, uh, Thierry Ponchon. Welcome, Thierry. Thank you. Welcome to you too. We have a very uh, special session on a very special topic, uh, and we have uh, three outstanding pioneers who really created and incorporated in clinical practice uh, uh, artificial intelligence. So in this session, you will learn whatever you need to learn uh, about this uh, topic. So let's first uh, start uh, theory immediately with the uh, first speaker that uh, is uh, Professor Alessandro Epici from Humanitas. He doesn't need any presentation, of course, but it is worth mentioning, Thierry, that uh, Alessandro pioneered the first device uh, to be approved in um, uh, the United States by FDA for AI in uh, uh, GI endoscopy. So please, uh, uh, Alessandro, give us your talk on the present role of AI for polyp detection and uh, uh, characterization. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Cesare. And thanks to the course organizer, to Professor Inoue, for this kind of invitation. It's my pleasure to talk about the topic of artificial intelligence in colonoscopy. These are my disclosures. Some of them are relevant to this topic. Technology has a new frontiers in terms of imaging. As you can see here, this is uh, very difficult to interpret the lesion into the right colon. I'm using uh, all different chromo endoscopy modalities of uh, Eluxeo and also the Zoom. And um, just using all this technology, you can realize this is a serratus style lesion with this plastic pattern. So also sometimes using the uh, chromo endoscopy, maybe even blue, you can uh, uh, further emphasize the pattern of the lesion and make a very detailed and precise evaluation and histology prediction. On the other side, that is uh, the new X1 or impulse technology, um, just uh, diagnosing with the assistance of, of artificial intelligence a very flat. Uh, the size red lesion with the uh, depressed area and also with this new technology using an advanced imaging system you can go single details you can go to fit pattern details just making again the prediction of histology despite this in colonoscopy we still have uh, an important issue according to this uh, a very recent systematic radio and meta-analysis during colonoscopy we have significant adenoma miss rate and this study is based only on tandem colonoscopy studies so very rigorous methodology in defining the missed adenoma and based on the data published in Gaston Chinese, Chinese authors we found that adenomas and advanced adenomas as well are missed more frequently than previously believed. This is a slide showing how big can be the adenoma detection variation among a community of endoscopists. Here, uh, these are the data published a couple of years ago uh, in endoscopy reporting the huge variability in adenoma detection rate, but above all, the fact that about 70% of all endoscopists participating in the colorectal cancer screening program, they had a very low adenoma detection rate below the threshold suggested by the European guidelines. And this is a major important issue because this means that most of the adenomas during this program were not detected. I need to go beyond human level performance. In medical decision support, we are usually confronted with uncertainty, 
probabilistic, unknown, noisy, dirty, erroneous, inaccurate, missing diagnosis. This translates uh, missed cancer uh, in uh, increased risk of having interval cancer. And this is why we need uh, artificial intelligence. John McCarthy was the first researcher who coined the term artificial intelligence in 1956 during a summer uh, camp in Dartmouth where a number of different researchers from a variety of disciplines they met all together to talk about innovation in new machines and new calculators and they try to define what was the perfect name for machines that were replicating the human intelligence. What is the difference between AI applied to colonoscopy so versus a standard colonoscopy? When you have the system helping you in doing colonoscopy, the system has no fatigue, it's always working, it's not affected by external factors, so the system is able to assist the colonoscopy uh, without uh, any operator interference. So colonoscopy de de becomes more operator independent. On the other side, when uh, a human person does colonoscopy, may be tired, it's not always working, can be overwhelmed by external factors. So uh, this makes the colonoscopy a very operator dependent procedure. So why AI is much better to this mathematical abstraction? It may take you a couple of seconds to realize what is the result of this estimation. But you do this at the level of the machine. So we estimated that the algorithm created for diagnostic purpose with AI can do about 4 million operations per second and a couple of billions of operations per colonoscopy. So the capability of the algorithm to make, uh, to replicate the uh, human mind approach in colonoscopy in terms of analyzing pixel or um, looking the entire mucosal surface is much more enhanced and increased with AI. So in the past four years, uh, AI for colonoscopy uh, has uh, been explored largely and is now evolving in uh, uh, very nice way. So we started with detection, moved to characterization. Now many companies are trying to define a sizing algorithm to tell us exactly what is the sizing of the lesion. And finally, there is also a lot of work in terms of reporting and quality control of colonoscopy. This is a video that show exactly how AI works so it is able to identify lesion and to tell you also several systems they are able to predict histology telling you the lesion is neoplastic rather than hyperplastic so you have a double service in a, in a, in a single algorithm in a single software one is telling you Pay attention, there is something abnormal in that part of the colon. The other one, when you switch to chrome endoscopy, is able to tell you to predict the histology of the lesion, so guiding the therapy. This is another um, beautiful video comparing AI versus non-AI. I was doing colonoscopy, there was a very pale area into the right colon. I tried to switch to chrome endoscopy because I didn't see any lesion and just using chrome endoscopy I realized there was a, a sort of uh, uh, hyperplastic or serrated lesion and finally using middle and blue I was able to recognize that there was a serrated style adenoma as well as uh, in this other part of the same procedure the patient had a serrated polyposis syndrome and AI helped me definitely in improving the diagnosis. 
these are two videos who are um, provided gently, kindly by Professor Ong Gang Yu. These two systems that are telling us how far we are going with artificial intelligence in endoscopy. The first one is the AI that helping us in defining the quality of bowel prep. So it's a real time scoring of the bowel prep that can be and translated in a sort of quality service. And again, this is another quality service. This, uh, this is uh, the end to end of the future, just uh, um, evaluating the speed of scope withdrawal. You know that withdrawal time is an important metric of colonoscopy, and having uh, such an assistance is outstanding. It's uh, incredibly useful because will guide us in using the right time during the withdrawal of the scope and making sure that we can uh, explore the entire uh, mucosal surface. This is right now the eye universe in endoscopy. As you can see, there are many systems available. There will be some more uh, under development. Most of them, like Fuji, Medtronic, Olympus, Pentax, EndoAngel, NAC, they are already approved in the European market, and also Medtronic is FDA approved. But what is the reality of the clinical data? Our group was able to publish last year in gastroenterology the first Western uh, randomized trial comparing white light versus assisted colonoscopy, we were able to demonstrate a significant increase of adenoma detection rate uh, in the harm of AI-assisted colonoscopy. And when we broke down the data uh, according to polyp size, location, morphology, again, we were able to demonstrate that the high was superior to white light, light with regard to all of these metrics. Also, we continue to explore the uh, impact of uh, AI in the diagnostic colonoscopy. We replicate the same trial using non-expert physicians. The definition of an expert was physician who have done in their career less than 2,000 colonoscopies. And the data uh, confirmed the uh, first study. This is a study that has been recently applied. Mm, approved in GAT, and as you can see here, again, AI was superior to uh, white light, also in the hands of non-expert in terms of increase of ADR. This is the last paper that we have worked has been recently approved, uh, um, approved in Lancet Gastroenterology. We did uh, a network meta-analysis trying to compare the impact of artificial intelligence with all other systems that have been proposed, uh, have been proposed in the past for increasing ADR. So we considered all randomized trial, including virtual chromendoscopy, traditional chromendoscopy, fuse, endocap, water assisted. So comparing all these systems with artificial intelligence, the result was the AI was superior to all other methods in terms of increasing ADR, advanced, missed, uh, advanced adenoma detection rate, and also adenoma miss rate. Now the next step that the start to try and doing is just also polyp characterization. This is the new KDI system for polyp characterization, as you can see here. This was very condition and uh, when we used the AI, we were able to demonstrate there was a combined lesion with some adenomatous features and some serrated effusion, and this was a serrated lesion with this plastic area. conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think we are in front of a new era, so probably in the future there will be no colonoscopy without AI, but according to this beautiful article in Financial Times, just don't forget that uh, sometimes robots are not as clever as billions, but they could be, and uh, please remind that uh, we need to get full control of colonoscopy yourself, we still the boss of colonoscopy. Thank you so much for your kind attention.
Thanks, Alessandro. It was very uh, good uh, insight. We'll discuss uh, about it a bit uh, later. Please, Thierry, have the second uh, talk. Okay, thank you very much, Cesare. Congratulations to Alexandro. Now it's the turn to Dr. Mori, very famous in the world of artificial intelligence dedicated to endoscopy, to give his talk. Everybody knows uh, Yushi Mori. Of course, I had the pleasure to invite him when I organized the first EAG days. He's associate professor at Showa University in Yokohama, which is located south of Tokyo, and is also postdoctoral researcher in Europe, not in Italy, but little north at Oslo University. Mm -hmm. And he published a lot already on artificial intelligence. He received several awards and he contributed in Japan, especially to the acquisition of a regularity approval for four tools dedicated to artificial intelligence. So he's well known in Japan, also the well known outside Japan. He's the co-member of artificial intelligence the committee uh, within the Japanese Society of Digital Endoscopy, GJES. And uh, his talk is about beyond the automatic polyp detection. Please, Yuichi, please, Dr. Mori. Hi, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for your kind, kind of introduction of Thierry and the Chijara. I'm very excited to talk about a future perspective on AI today, together with Ale and the, uh, my Japanese colleague. So uh, today I'm gonna talk about it uh, beyond the uh, future perspective, let's say. Now this is my UI, and the, uh, as you can see, the, there are roughly three roles of AI in colonoscopy or GI endoscopy. The first one would be the polyp detection or a computer edit detection, as uh, they have already uh, explained. And the, we have the remaining two functionalities, uh, including the computer edit diagnosis and the computer edit quality assurance. Now, as you can see, computer edit diagnosis uh, as helping us identify the histology of the polyps, while the computer added quality assurance is a very emerging technology, I would say. Uh, it will uh, help us to identify the uh, quality measures such as the withdrawal time or the rate of the blind spots during withdrawal of endoscopy. Uh, so if we look at the market status, uh, it is amazing because uh, we have got uh, already more than 10 devices which have al already secured a regulatory approval in Europe, Japan, and the United States. You know. And the, uh, in the field of CDE, uh, it is already packed because the uh, main endoscopy corporations such as Olympus, Fujifilm, Pentax have already released their own systems integrated in their processors. While the third parties such as the Medtronic, NHG or other uh, industries have already raised a very attractive options as well. And the society is also moving forward. Uh, this is the brand new guideline from the ESGE or European Society of GI Endoscopy, uh, where we can find a weak recommendation for the use of AI during endoscopy or uh, colonoscopy. This is very amazing because to the best of my knowledge, this is the only guideline that provided with the recommendation in the field of AI in endoscopy. But the, we have some challenges so far. Yes, challenge is nice because the, uh, this will be the promising measure to enjoy the future. Uh, but we have to admit that there are uh, knowledge gaps uh, maybe between the uh, currently available technology and the future perspective. So here I'd like to pick up four major problems or the challenges. And I'd like to address each challenges in a detailed way. The first one is the uh, unknown cancer prevention effect from the use of CDE. Uh, as I'll uh, explained, uh, there have been already six or more RCTs. And according to the latest meta-analysis, uh, ADR was expected to increase by maybe 50% uh, from the uh, absolute 
number, uh, it will increase by uh, from 25% to 37%, which is a decent increment and benefit for the patient care, definitely. However, nobody knows if this increment can contribute to cancer prediction in a real life patient. Uh, but uh, we did uh, some simulation study before be, be, because there is no randomized control trial with the long-term follow-up. So this micro simulation study led by Dr. Uh, Professor Hassan or uh, Cesar uh, showed us a really interesting result. And uh, uh, this result shows that uh, we can expect a 5% absolute reduction in terms of the cancer instance with use of AI in addition to coronoscopy screening. I guess the 5% reduction is decent in terms of cancer prevention. And of course, we, have, we need a real life study to demonstrate if the use of AI is contributing to cancer prevention. This is exactly what we are working on together with the uh, Polish researchers and the uh, Norwegian researchers. So let's move on to the uh, next topic, namely the unknown cost effectiveness uh, with use of CDE plus minus CDX. This is a very important topic because the, unless we get a nice cost effectiveness, it is really difficult to get a reimbursement from the, uh, from the health insurance bodies. And the lack of the reimbursement will lead to a non adaption of AI technology in clinical practice. So this is really, really important point of view. And here uh, I'm explaining how we should understand the uh, cost effectiveness of AI in colonoscopy. It's a little bit complicated because the use of CDE primarily increases the cost of colonoscopy because uh, it will uh, increase the detection of polyps, which means the uh, increment of polypectomies or the number of the surveillance colonoscopies. But uh, this kind of cost increment can be mitigated or balanced by the two measures. One is the uh, cancer prevention effect induced by the use of CDE uh, because it will increase the ADR. And the other solution would be the use of CDX because the CDX will contribute to reduction of unnecessary polypectomies for hyperplastic polyps or inflammatory polyps. So I think these uh, two measures are really important to reduce the cost or increase the cost by CDX. And we have already done uh, some simulation study to qualify the cost effectiveness of the use of CDAE. And according to this analysis, surprisingly, we can expect uh, some cost reduction from the CDE uh, because apparently it increases the cost of colonoscopy. However, the amount of the cost reduction by the cancer prevention effect was really big. And actually, uh, we can expect around $50 uh, uh, saving uh, from the use of CDE from a long-term perspective. So this is a really encouraging thing, I guess. And apparently, if we have a chance to implement CDX in addition to CDE, uh, we have further reduction in terms of the cost saving. Uh, this is the uh, sub-analysis of the prospective trial conducted by a Japanese team. And uh, we can expect uh, around $120 saving from the use of CDX in addition to CDE. So I guess the combined use of the CDE plus CDX is a promising measure to, to reduce the cost of colonoscopy or a medical cost related to corrected cancer prevention. And this is exactly the way to go uh, because there is uh, some preceding achievement in a different field. This is the uh, announcement from the Medicare last year, last September, uh, about a use of AI stroke platforms for a CT scanning. And according to this news article, hospital will be paid around $1,000 if they use this kind of AI modality to to accurately predict the AI or the brain stroke. So this is a way to go. We have to establish the cost effectiveness of AI if we want to get a reimbursement. So the next topic would be the uh, 
surveillance interval prediction. Actually, with the current technology, we cannot predict the uh, precise surveillance interval because of the lack of the technology, unfortunately. Uh, this is a kind of introduction of the computer-aided diagnosis uh, from this research group, my research group. And uh, according to this end brain technology, uh, we've got uh, over 90% accuracy in terms of the differentiation of neoplastic change, namely between the adenoma versus hyperplastic polyp. However, this is not enough to implement the AI-based uh, surveillance interval because uh, current surveillance interval guidelines require three kinds of the capabilities uh, in terms of the optical diagnosis. One is the adenoma versus hyperplastic polyps, which is already covered by the current AI technology. However, the remaining two things include the uh, differentiation between the low and the high grade dysplasia and the identification of the cesar-serrated lesions, both of which have not been realized with, by the uh, current AI technologies. So I guess these two things should be addressed in a couple of years. And the, uh, our research team is now working on the third topic, namely the identification of the selected uh, lesions. Uh, this project is being led by uh, my colleague, Dr. Misawa. And uh, as you can see, the uh, presence of the cesar selected lesion is uh, uh, identified in a real-time fashion. So this is the definitely way to go for us. And the final topic that I would like to emphasize on is the uh, uh, availability to identify the cancer in a real-time fashion, because there are really big numbers of the adenomas which are rejected uh, 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 surgically rather than endoscopically. Uh, and this number is shown in a prospective trial uh, published in gastroenterology in 2018. Actually, in the United States, over 25% of the corrective surgeries were done for adenomas, unfortunately. I think the, uh, most of these cases came from the lack of the uh, precise diagnosis with use of endoscopy. But I think I think this kind of number can be reduced to, let's say, within uh, 5% with use of the benefits of AI or computer-added diagnosis. Let me introduce some example as a, as a solution. Uh, so in this case, you can find uh, some protruded lesion in sigmoid column. Actually, a uh, histopathological specimen shows that uh, this lesion was an uh, invasive cancer invading some mucosal layer by around 3,000 micrometer. However, we have got a nice tool to help us identify this kind of invasion before doing surgery or endoscopic treatment. Uh, this endobrain plus technology provided us uh, with a confidence on the diagnosis in terms of the cancer recognition. Uh, this lesion was identified as invasive cancer with the aid of endobrain plus. And the important thing here is that endobrain plus is commercially available in Japan at least uh, with the securance of the regulatory approval. So this is a real life fashion, not a future. But the uh, future, future lies on uh, this more specific topic, namely identification of T1B cancer from T1A cancer. This is still in a research field because there is no AI device on the market which identifies the uh, presence of T1B cancer. But uh, this is really promising because T1B cancer is definitely the sub as a, uh, indicator of correctal surgery rather than the endoscopic treatment because of the risk of the lymph node metastasis. Uh, but uh, from my understanding, it will take some time uh, before we can enjoy this brand new technology. It's just still within the research area. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to summarize my talk uh, with uh, some take home messages. Uh, first, I think AI for colonoscopy is already being implemented into clinical practice uh, with the securance of the regulatory approval in Europe, Japan, and the United States and the other countries in Asia. And uh, I think there have been uh, lots of the problems ahead, 
Uh, especially, we, we, I, I just presented the four major challenges to be addressed in the coming years. But uh, honestly speaking, I have a really positive outlook on the future of AI because it has a decent possibility to improve the quality of endoscopy and hopefully improving the uh, uh, cancer prognosis in uh, lower GI tract. I'm looking forward to the future of endoscopy. Thank you very much for your kind attention. A great thank you, Yushi. A great thank you. A very clear presentation, and you well presented these four challenges. Yes, we are all convinced that there is a great future for artificial intelligence in endoscopy, for sure, especially in the colon. But we have many challenges, and you introduced four, but I'm sure that there are other challenges. And maybe, Cesare, you want, you want to speak about yeah. another challenge or discuss yeah. the challenges already presented by Yuishi? Yeah, Thierry. I feel that um, for our audience, uh, we must uh, keep clearly uh, distinct uh, detection and characterization. Yes. Uh, first, uh, here in Europe, uh, Thierry, we have a lot of experience uh, with the detection device. Uh, and my feeling uh, uh, is that uh, it is very easy to implement them in clinical practice. Uh, I do every colonoscopy with an AI for detection. However, Thierry, here in Europe, uh, we already have uh, four or five companies uh, that are offering uh, their own uh, software. So how to decide uh, what is a good software? What is the best uh, um, software? How to compare? Should we compare? Should any software be compared uh, with the reference uh, standard? I know that uh, Yuichi has some uh, uh, idea about it, but uh, then maybe Thierry also you can have your own. Uh, Period. Yes, also it's not only comparison, it's also evolution. Because I suspect that each system will be updated, upgraded every two or three years. So this we should discuss first about the business model, okay? I'm interested by artificial intelligence, I want to use for detection. Okay, I have the money, so do I rent one? Do I uh, buy one? Of course, which one? But the best is probably to rent or to organize a business, a leasing, a leasing, in order to, to, to get always the last uh, uh, evolution. What do you think, uh, Yuichi? Yeah, How that's, I should uh, manage? That's a very important question because uh, you have to pay money to, to enjoy the high technology, unfortunately. So uh, the, nowadays, I think the subscription model is the uh, main player in this field because, you, as you mentioned, the, the, I think the updating is the nature of AI. So, so I think the buying something at a certain time makes no sense because uh, you cannot use it forever. So I think the, most of the corporations are offering kind of subscription models to the uh, many facilities or doctors. And uh, uh, if I can answer to the answer the questions provided by Cesar, uh, I think using the uh, kind of uh, or openly uh, accessible database is a measure to compare the different source of the technologies. Uh, we have a kind of, uh, let's say, a sound database uh, provided by our research team uh, in which you can find uh, uh, millions of image frames with a perfect annotation. If you use this kind of test platform, you can compare the uh, different AI software in the uh, same format. Uh, but uh, to the best of my knowledge, there is no cited paper which shows the difference of these uh, uh, abilities in terms of poly recognition. Uh, this okay. is the way to go, okay. I guess. Okay, now second topic from my side, and I will let the floor to Cesare. The psychological effects of artificial intelligence on the endoscopist, okay? Because I have a feeling, okay, initially we were interested to reach the second. Then we were interested to detect polyps, okay? But now if a, if a machine detects polyp for us, what is my main interest performing colonoscopy? Maybe null. So there will be, I think, maybe a negative effect on the motivation of the endoscopist, first point, and his knowledge also 
will decline. So how do you, what do you think about this? That means you will, you, you will have a negative effect on my motivation. Mm -hmm. And the motivation of many, many, many endoscopists to perform colonoscopy. And I think it is a real challenge. Yeah, it's a big challenge. You know, the, if you have a very genius supporter just beside you, maybe you will get neglected. And also, the, uh, if you look at the uh, EFG guideline published last year, uh, you can find a kind of uh, alert uh, which mentions the de-skilling effect of the use of AI. So that's a topic we should discuss further. Maybe Cesar have something in your mind, I guess. <laughs> I feel theory, it's like uh, with driving. Uh, the, fa the fact that uh, today cars uh, has a lot of safety system uh, doesn't make driving uh, less attractive or even less tiring. So colonoscopy theory is a very complex procedure. You need to navigate, detect, uh, wash, uh, characterize, resect. So to have one specific task uh, in this uh, doesn't reduce so much your motivation. It's like a pilot with the airplane. They use uh, automatic pilot, but they are anyway happy to be pilot. They make a lot of money. They travel the world and they have a lot of opportunity. But uh, can um, uh, Thierry um, allow me to move to characterization? Because thanks to Haru, I have uh, the pioneer um, of uh, nice and giant classification in uh, Europe, that is Thierry Ponchon. And I have uh, the pioneer uh, of AI for characterization, uh, that is uh, uh, Yuiki Mori. So Thierry, you brought uh, nice um, here in uh, Europe, uh, probably 10 years uh, ago, but there were some barriers. There were barriers uh, in uh, reset and discard strategy because endoscopists uh, uh, perform uh, not optimally, but also the living situ strategy is not so clear in uh, our own uh, uh, practice. So uh, Thierry and then Yuiki, do you feel that AI will change uh, uh, our approach toward the characterization? And again, Thierry to you, do you feel that endoscopy should still uh, be trained in a nice and lay net, uh, or they can just uh, jump on uh, the AI by Uichi and uh, forget about it? Uh, I think that in the soon future, yes, artificial intelligence will, will be the leader, it's also for characterization. And then you will not need to, 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 to characterize yourself. But nevertheless, you should be in charge of a patient. Huh? So who is in charge of a patient? The operator. So at the end, you will have to take the decision. Okay, you can rely on the diagnosis made by computer, but you will have to take the decision and you have to think about over, uh, uh, over factors which could influence your decision. The location of the lesion, uh, of course, the size, but the age of a patient uh, uh, and, and uh, comorbidities, etc. So you will still be in charge to decide for surgery, for EMR or ESD, my, my feeling. You, you okay? I, I agree. I agree with the theory's uh, opinion on that. Because uh, if you look at the uh, cardiogram or electrocardiogram, uh, you can get us uh, some advice from the, uh, from the automated system. And you, you may follow the, the, the decision from the machine. And in that case, maybe uh, you will be de-skilled, unfortunately. But unfortunately, I think this is the way to go if you want to uh, incorporate the AI technology in a full way. So I would say that we should continue learning, maybe with the use of the ESG learning force. But at the same time, we may depend on largely AI output. So, so it's a little bit... Uh, cumbersome step, but uh, we have to mix both the education program and dependence on AI in clinical practice. Okay, last comment from my side about uh, quality, okay? Uh, computer aided quality. Uh, concerning analysis of the complete, to be sure that you analyze completely the mucosa. Okay, that you don't miss any, any location. So which are the next steps with artificial intelligence? Soon I will get a, a system which will tell me, okay, you did not see nicely behind these folds. You, you have to come back. You okay? 
Yeah, uh, I, uh, honestly speaking, I think the uh, quality assurance is much more important than polyp detection. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, there are two reasons why we miss the polyp. Maybe one is the uh, recognition error. The other one is the exposure error, as you just mentioned. And the latter one is uh, really important and maybe the most important issue for us. So uh, I think the uh, identification of the red of the missed area and also the uh, identif identification of the uh, uh, your ability in terms of the mucosal exposure is very important, which should be supported by the AI or computer aided diagnosis. And uh, it's, it should be uh, incorporated in your clinical practice routinely. Okay, I think so too. Okay, thank you, thank you, Yuki. It's, it was great, okay, to have also the discussion with you, huh? because you are in, not, in, not only in charge to develop technology, you are also in charge to answer to all challenges, okay? And to help us, to help the scientific societies, okay? To, to write the perfect guidelines adapted to artificial intelligence. And, and this is really challenging. Okay, thank you very much. Now, Cesare, please try. You have to introduce yes. Dr. Irazawa. Thierry, if I remember correctly, the founder of the European Community and Society, Michel Cremera, like to say that the most difficult procedure in endoscopy is not ERCP, but upper endoscopy. Because in upper endoscopy, you have a lot of miss rate and you have a lot of difficult uh, differential uh, diagnosis. So we started with the column because probably it was easy for developer, but upper endoscopy is probably the most uh, fruitful challenge uh, for um, artificial intelligence. And today we are very lucky because we have uh, the pioneer of AI for detection and characterization uh, of precancerous and cancerous condition uh, in uh, upper GI is uh, Tosiaki Irastava, who is um, vice director of the division of gastroenterology at the Cancer Institute Hospital in Tokyo. So you play in your uh, house, uh, Tosiaki. So we are very, we are very interested in uh, what you say because we really need AI for uh, uh, upper GI, and then we will have a nice uh, uh, discussion. So your talk. Um, it uh, will be on uh, how to uh, implement AI in uh, upper GI. Please have your talk. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. It is a great honor to be able to speak to you today. In this presentation, I'd like to talk about current status and future perspective of AI in gastric cancer. Gastric cancer annually affects more than 1 million people worldwide. And the number of deaths is about 780,000. And gastric cancer is fifth most common type of malignant tumor. And the third leading cause of cancer related deaths worldwide. The incidence of gastric cancer varies widely by region. More than 70% of gastric cancer cases occur in Asia. Especially Japan, China have high gastric cancer incidence. Therefore, AI in gastric cancer is mainly reported from Japan, China, and Korea. The progress of gastric cancer depends on the stage at the time of detection. And the progress is poor when it is detected in advanced stage. However, five-year survival rate for early gastric cancer exceeds 90%. Early detection and treatment of gastric cancer is important for the prognosis. Although, Early detection and treatment of gastric cancer is needed. The rate of false negative detection of gastric cancer by EGT is reported to be 4.6 to 25.8 percent. Furthermore, inexperienced endoscopists are more likely to miss gastric cancer than experienced endoscopists. This is Chris. Can you detect the gastric cancer?
Did you find a cancer? But if you if you ask me, maybe there is one, but, but I don't see it. <laughs> but maybe uh, on the right on the on the right part of the slide, yes, but on the left, no. Okay. There is a cancer in this image. Here is because of cancer, 80 millimeter in diameter in this way. Some algae cancer didn't show only subtle molecular changes, which are difficult to distinguish from background mucosa. So endoscopic diagnosis of gastric cancer is difficult. And AI is expected to help endoscopists improve diagnosis of gastric cancer. Today, I will talk about four, these four topics related to the application of AI in gastric cancer. First topic is anatomical classification of stomach. In adequate examination of the stomach is one of the reasons for missing gastric cancer on endoscopy. The stomach is an organ with wide curved lumen and there are blind spots in the stomach, even when the entire stomach is examined. If AI can recognize the anat anatomical region of the stomach, it can be confirmed that the entire stomach was examined. Takeyama introduced an AI system based on the images from EGT. The AI system divides the endoscopic images of the upper GI tract into pharynx, esophagus, upper stomach, middle stomach, lower stomach, and duodenum. The AUC was good fit. There are several other similar reports. Thus, AI is expected to reduce the number of missed cases of gastric cancer due to incomplete examination by endoscopists. Next topic is identification of H. pylori infection. As you know, since 95 to 99% of gastric cancer are caused by H. pylori infection, Diagnosis of H. pylori infection status is important for the risk assessment of gastric cancer. However, identification of H. pylori infection based on endoscopic finding is subject to judgment and depends on the diagnostic ability of the physician with a wide variation in the diagnostic accuracy. Nakasima develops an AI system that improves the diagnostic accuracy of H. pylori infection by using linked color imaging. Validation was carried out using a video of the laser curvature of the stomach in 120 cases. The accuracy of AI system was about 80%. The diagnostic accuracy was similar to that of experienced endoscopists. The accuracy of diagnosing H. pylori infection status by AI can potentially exceed that of endoscopists. I will show you a video. This is an infected case. The AI system diagnosis, this is ineffective. Next case is currently infected case. The AI system diagnosis, currently infected. It is correct. Last case is post education case. The AI system diagnosis, post education, 91%. Next topic is detection of gastric cancer. We reported an AI system for detecting gastric cancer. It was the first in the world. An AI system was constructed using deep learning and trained using more than 10,000 endoscopy images of gastric cancer. The AI system diagnosed 232 regions as gastric cancer. 
71% were gastric cancer. Sensitivity was 92.2%. On the other hand, 161 were non cancerous region. PPV was 30.6%. AI system detects small gastric cancer like in these cases. The AI system also detects the type 4 advanced gastric cancers. Conversely, six gastric cancers were missed by the AI system. Five or six regions were minus cancers. All missed regions were superficial, depressed, and different type intermediate cancers that are difficult to distinguish from gastritis even for experienced endoscopists. This table presents detail of false positive regions. Nearly half of the misdiagnosed regions were gastritis with changes in color tone or irregular mucosal surface. The next most common cause of misdiagnosis was normal anatomic structure of the cardia, angus, and pylorus. The air system misdiagnosed the gastritis as gastric cancer like in these cases. The normal anatomic structure of cardia and angus were also misdiagnosed, like in these cases. AI changed that previous case. Uh, this is a horse point. And AI accurately detects gastric cancer. It's correct. Next, we started using the video. The AI system correctly diagnosed 94.1%. This is equivalent to our result for still images. I will show you video. Real-time diagnosis using CNN system is displayed on the left screen. When the probability of existence of the lesion reached a predetermined threshold value, the lesions are pointed out with blue rectangular frame. Case 1. The superficial depressed type lesion in the posterior wall of the antrum. The CNN system correctly identified the lesion with white light imaging and also with NBI. Case 2. Superficial elevated type lesion in lower body. The CNN system identified the lesion immediately after it appeared on the screen. Case 3. Our CNN system also could identify slightly reddish superficial depressed type lesion on the lesser curvature of the lower body. Case four. Our CNN system correctly distinguished the lesion from surrounding gastritis. Oh, which is superior to endoscopist and AI? We conducted a study to compare between AI and 67 endoscopists. We conducted a test to detect 209 algas cancer from about 3,000 still endoscopy images. This study showed very interesting result. This is the ROC curve. The sensitivity of AI was significantly higher than that of endoscopists. Only one endoscopist won AI with sensitivity. Only one. Last topic is differentiation between gastritis and gastric cancer. 
We developed an AI system to differentiate algal cancer from gastritis using magnified NBI images. The AI system diagnosed gastric cancer from NBI magnifying endoscopy video, like this. The AI system diagnosed non cancerous region. The AI system was significantly more accurate than two expert, significantly less accurate than one expert, and, and not significantly different from the remaining eight expert. Application of AI to differentiate cancer from non cancerous region can potentially reduce unnecessary biopsies. We are currently developing an AI system that can differentiate between gastric cancer and gastritis with white light. This AI system can diagnose gastric cancer in real time, like this. Current limitation of AI in gastric cancer. Most published studies on the use of AI in gastric cancer have been retrospective studies from Japan and China. Many uses still images and limited number of test samples. The accuracy rate in each of these studies is high. The results from all these studies cannot be compared due to different test data and study designs. It is not clear whether endoscopists are keen on using AI in their daily clinical practice. Future RCT on the usability of AI system for endoscopies uh, clinical practice are needed. Future perspective of AI in gastric cancer AI can supplement the lack of experience of unskilled physicians through real-time support for detecting gastric cancer, qualitative diagnosis, horizontal extent, and depth of invasion. And it is quite possible that AI can predict lymphoma metastasis, post-operative complications, response to drug treatments, prognosis, by analyzing endoscopic images, radical images, and clinical data. AI is expected to be the supporting tool in many aspects of endoscopic diagnosis of gastric cancer. Thank you for your attention. A great thank you, Dr. Hirozawa. It was also very, very clear, okay? Well presented with uh, excellent uh, images and videos. Um, just a general concern. It seems that Europeans are basically less interested by gastric carcinoma because we see less cases, especially only maybe in, in Portugal, there are more cases than in the rest of Europe. Okay, basically, it seems that we are less interested. But in fact, in fact, we bet we, 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 we need we, we need more artificial intelligence than you because you are, you are already very good. We are not good because as we don't, so, we don't see so many cases, we cannot detect them adequately and we have few chance to detect one. I calculated that in a career of European endoscopist with a mean level activity, he has the chance to find at the maximum five cases in his own career. So he can miss easily one or two or three or four. Yes, he has, the, he has the right to miss one or maybe more because he can see only five. So if we have artificial intelligence, it will be very helpful in Europe on a daily practice. But we, what we need to know is we need to know the accuracy, of course. It's not like in a colon, it's more difficult. So more time to evaluate the, the to evaluate the the, the, the different uh, systems, but for sure, in Europe we need also for education. We need 
to educate our young colleagues to well examine a, a stomach. We, we don't perform a systematic examination of a different parts of a stomach. It, in Europe, we spend maybe one or two minutes in the stomach, you understand? So there is a huge need. Okay, now, Cesare. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Tosiaki, a very nice presentation. But um, now I want to consider myself uh, as a community endoscopy, endoscopy performing an upper endoscopy, okay? As Thierry was addressing. I am expecting uh, to detect uh, at least uh, three diseases, squamous, uh, cell neoplasia in the esophagus. Neoplasia in Barrett esophagus, uh, early gastric cancer. How do you envision uh, AI applied to upper endoscopy? Should we have uh, three machines, three software uh, in the same machine, one software for the three diseases, uh, how do you feel that in the future uh, we will uh, incorporate AI in upper endoscopy? Okay. Uh, in the future, AI uh, can detect as well cancer, uh, squamous cell, and uh, other other more. And uh, AI can also detect gastric cancer and uh, duodenal adenoma. Uh, I think AI uh, in the near future AI can do it. Yes, but, but the, the, the question was very interesting. Do I need three systems? Uh, or, uh, or only one system? Uh, only one system. Right? If, yes, please. <laughs> it will be better for me <laughs> and for, for, for my hospital, especially if I can use the same from, from the colon in the stomach. Could be perfect, but I suppose it will be impossible. No, the, the system at least are different from the stomach and the colon. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Probably. So, Thierry, I feel that uh, a second point uh, comes directly from what you said. There is uh, a difference uh, in prevalence uh, between uh, Japan and uh, Europe. So, when uh, we use uh, your system, uh, Tosiaki, in uh, Europe, uh, are we expecting uh, the same rate uh, of uh, false positive, uh, false negative, true positive? Uh, or uh, do you feel that our different uh, prevalence of disease uh, will create uh, problems uh, to your system? And then I'm also curious by Yuichi, because also Yuichi experienced this difference uh, in prevalence uh, between the two areas. Uh, I think it's very uh, important issue. So AI uh, should uh, Japanese uh, we consider Japanese AI uh, that AI can uh, diagnose Japanese pe uh, Japanese people uh, best, but uh, European people the prevalence is different. So uh we we should uh, uh, test uh, japanese uh, ai system uh where uh in europe is uh, uh, where where that yes but be because maybe cesare you suspect that a gastric carcinoma is different in europe than in yes. in japan looks differently yes. yeah maybe we have an the lesion yeah, Probably maybe I, I can make so, some comments okay, on this topic. Please. Yeah, I, I think this the Chizal's question is very uh, to the point because the you know the difference uh, in terms of the prevalence of difference differs according to the countries. But I, from my understanding, we don't have to change the threshold of the uh, AI because the, everything should be based on sensitivity or specificity, not false positive rate or a positive. Uh, PPV or NPV because uh, it is affected by prevalence of cancer. So we should use the same system with the same setting, setting uh, uh, regardless of uh, where you are doing your practice. Of course, you will have a large number of the false positive in Europe, maybe more than Japan, but uh, that's, the, that's it because of the difference of the prevalence. So that's what I'm thinking okay. about now. And, and, uh, and another point, um... Which does concern uh, 
what you are doing now in, in Japan? How are you using artificial intelligence? Do you use do you use AI routinely now for the stomach and for the, the workers, or do you continue to 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 evaluate the systems? Irizawa, is it is it is it routinely used or still under evaluation? Uh, now uh, in Japan. Uh, upper GI uh, endoscopic AI is uh, uh, is uh, we we can't use because uh, we overcome regression. Okay. So okay. Uh, we we can't use now. Okay, but you suspect you will use it when in two years? In two years, it will be used. Uh, I I want to one one year. <laughs> Oh, one year. Okay, perfect. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's, okay. So I was less interested by H. pylori, huh? but uh, I, for okay. gastric carcinoma, for 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 us, it's it is very important. Last last comment from Cesare, and we close the discussion. Yeah, Thierry, I want to stress uh, that AI may be very useful for training, uh, because, for instance, uh, if I come to you, you can show me a lesion, but I don't know by heart the histology. When, uh, when uh, I have an AI in my unit, uh, my trainee look uh, at the same time detection and characterization of the lesion. The trainee immediately learn that this is, I don't know, a DLNET 2B non-granular LST. So I would not under-evaluate uh, the role of uh, detection and characterization together for learning in uh, uh, the I endoscopy, but anyway, we had three great talks and very happy. Okay, thank you, thank you. You know that you are right. Uh, detection and characterization are not completely separated in the esophagus and in the stomach. In comparison to colon, you see a polyp and then you, you want to know which polyp is it. Okay, so this there is a clear uh, separation. Okay, so, so uh, uh, we, we had great talks, very, very clear. And I, I learned a lot. Thank you to both of you. And thank you also to a great colleague from Europe, Repici, who was a pioneer in Europe for artificial intelligence. And um, I realize now that we can use artificial intelligence, if, if not now, but very soon, OK? In one or two years for, for, for the stomach. So OK, I can use. But nevertheless, it opens a lot of challenges and intellectual challenges, education challenges, medical legal challenges, et cetera, et cetera. And so finally, maybe we need a computer to solve all these challenges <laughs> because I have a feeling that myself, I, 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 there are too many challenges. I'm, I just, my, my brain, I cannot solve these challenges. I just can ask the questions, okay? But uh, I will be very interested to see in 10 years, what we will do with artificial intelligence, how will you will use it, how it will be used. Of course, we will have, but not sure that uh, I will still be very happy as an endoscopist. <laughs> we will see, okay. So thank you very much. A great thank you to, to, free, to all of you and a great thank you to Cesare for, uh, for, for co-chairing the session with me. And again, Thank you, Aru Inoue, for the opportunity he gave to us to organize such session. Thank you very much.